Good evening. I'm glad that you could tune in tonight and join us. I hope everybody out there is staying warm and staying safe with all this crazy weather, um, except for the, the rare and crazy few like me who enjoy this weather. I hope you're getting uh, the best enjoyment out of it that you can like I have. I do want to thank the elders for this opportunity to, to preach to you all tonight. Uh, it's a very humbling honor to, to be in front of you, and I've been going to Hillcrest since before I can remember, and it's just always a privilege to get up here, and I just love Hillcrest so much. Uh, it's a great church and a fantastic family, and I just love a lot of people that, that go there and, and appreciate you all. So thank you again for, for being here and for tuning in. Now tonight, our topic is going to be on apathy, the word apathy. Now, what exactly does that word mean? I found two really good definitions for it. Um, the first one is a lack of interest, enthusiasm, or concern. And the second definition I found uh, concerning apathy is the complete lack of emotion about a human being, a thing, or an activity. And as we begin, I want to share a story with you a more modern story that shows apathy at its worst. Uh, the story concerns a 28-year-old woman by the name of Kitty Genovese, who lived and worked in Queens, New York. On March the 13th, 1964, she arrived home early in the morning and was walking to her apartment after she parked her car. Before she got inside, a man approached her, brandishing a hunting knife. He chased her down and he stabbed her. She cried out for help, and while one neighbor yelled at the attacker to go away, no one had called the police. The attacker ran away, and a badly injured Kitty Genovese made her way into her apartment building. However, a locked door prevented her from getting any further than the hallway. The attacker returned about 10 minutes later, and after looking around the area, finally found his victim. When he found her, he assaulted her and then killed her, stole her money, and then ran away into the night. The murderer, Winston Mosley, was captured six days later. He confessed to the Genovese murder as well as two others. He spent the rest of his life in prison where he died in 2016. But what is striking about this tragic story is the apathy. The attack from start to finish lasted about 30 minutes. But other than the one neighbor yelling at the attacker to go away, nothing was done. Several people had heard or seen the struggle themselves, yet no one immediately called the police. No one came to help Kitty Genovese. By the time help was summoned, it was too late. While the random stabbing cost Kitty Genovese her life that day, apathy was a big factor in her death. If only one of the several witnesses had immediately done something, anything at all, perhaps she would have lived. Apathy may come off as an indifferent word when we uh, look over the definition, or if you read the definition, it is by itself just a very indifferent word word, and it comes off as very indifferent, because the attitude of the word is indifferent. But apathy can cause so much harm due to its inherent inaction. Sadly, apathy can be found in the Bible as well. And I want us to look at some of these instances and see what we can learn from them. And if you do have your Bibles on you, if you would turn with me to Genesis chapter 4. That's where we will begin this evening in our Bibles. Genesis chapter 4, and when we get there, we're going to read verses 1 through 15. And again, that is Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 15. And we are going to look at Cain's apathy in this passage. Genesis 4. 1 through 15. Now the man had relations with his wife Eve, and conceived, and gave birth to Cain. And she said, I have gotten a man-child with the help of the Lord. Again she gave birth to his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of flocks, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. 
So it came about in the course of time that Cain brought an offering to the Lord of the fruit of the ground. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel, your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? He said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. Now you were cursed from the ground, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you cultivate the ground, it will no longer yield its strength to you. You will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is too great to bear. Behold, you have driven me this day from the face of the ground, and from your face I will be hidden, and I will be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. So the Lord said to him, Therefore, Whoever kills Cain, vengeance will be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord appointed a sign for Cain, so that no one finding him would slay him. Here, in this passage, we see the first murder in history. And murder, of course, is an absolutely horrific crime. But while Cain's terrible sin is the big focus in this passage, as well it should be, his apathy should not be ignored. Look at what Cain said again in verse 9. He told God that he did not know where his brother Abel was. And that, of course, was not true at all. That was an outright lie by Cain. But it is easy to see Cain's apathy by him saying, I do not know. Cain knew very well where Abel was, dead in the field. He knew, but he didn't seem to care. The next thing Cain said was, Am I my brother's keeper? Cain took no responsibility here. He basically was telling God that he was not responsible for looking out for his brother. That he was not responsible for his brother's well-being. And it's clear that Cain was trying to avoid the fact that he was solely responsible for Abel's murder. Cain's lack of responsibility showed how full he was of apathy. Murder took Abel's life, and there's no doubt about that. But apathy on the part of Cain was certainly a contributor to that. And now secondly, if you would turn with me to Revelation chapter 3, we're going from the first book in the Bible to the, the last one here. Revelation chapter 3. And when we get there, we're going to read verses 14 through 19. Again, that is Revelation chapter 3 and verses 14 through 19. Revelation three fourteen through 19. And we're going to look here at the church at Laodicea. Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. And this is Jesus speaking here in this passage. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, The Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm, 
and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed and the eye salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and discipline, therefore be zealous and repent. So we see in this passage, Christ is rebuking the church at Laodicea. It's one thing to have a single person who is caught up in apathy. But to have an entire church, an entire congregation, Struggling with this is even more serious, and quite frankly, it is alarming here. The big issue with this church is that they are lukewarm, a word that illustrates their apathy very, very well. Lukewarm, apathy, those words go together very well, don't you think? The church of Laodicea, they didn't think that they needed help. They thought they were doing all right, when in fact they need help. A lot of help to ignite their faith. They are strongly warned by Christ to invest spiritually, to correct the problems that they are mired in, and to repent by using greater discipline and zealousness. This indifferent church needed a wake-up call, and they needed to put their apathy behind them. I'm sure that we are all aware of one person's apathy and how we can cause a wide range of problems. Even one person with a high degree of apathy causes a lot of issues. But multiply that by the members who make up a church, and that creates a vast magnitude of issues. A church infested with apathy is a church that will not accomplish anything positive. None of us want to be members of a church like Laodicea was. We cannot afford as a congregation to let apathy drag us down as a group. We must unite together and rise above the indifference that apathy can bring. And I know that none of us want to be a congregation that is apathetic a congregation that really doesn't care, that is lukewarm. We want to be a congregation that cares and that takes action and that does the very best that we can. And I know that all of us feel that way, and that's what we need to strive for. And thirdly, this evening, if you would now turn with me to Luke chapter 10, is where we will be examining next. Luke chapter 10, and we're going to look at verses 30 through 37 there. Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. And we see here the story of the Good Samaritan. And if there is a, a great way in the Bible to illustrate apathy, and then to see an example of how apathy is set aside and good things happen, this is just about as good as it gets here. Again, Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 37. Jesus replied and said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among robbers, and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by chance a priest was going down on that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, who was on a journey, came upon him, and when he saw him, he felt compassion, and came to him 
and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own beast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. On the next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. Which of these three do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell into the robber's hands? And he said, The one who showed mercy toward him. Then Jesus said to him, Go and do the same. This parable, again, is a great illustrator of apathy. Notice the first two men who came upon the robbed and beaten man. Both held prominent and respected positions in that society, a priest and a Levite, respectively. To, to the Jews at this time, those were very high, very regarded and respected positions. Yet, neither of these highly regarded men stopped to help. In fact, they did their best to avoid the situation. Their apathy was on full display, and they did not seem to care about this man. This goes to show that anyone can be plagued by apathy, no matter how proper or religious they may appear. Because of the apathy shown by the priest and the Levite, the robbed and beaten man could have potentially lost his life. Let's say more robbers came along and, and, and finished the deed, if you will. Or maybe a wild animal came along and, and, and decided to devour him. Or maybe there was bad weather and he got caught in a storm and, and was not able to survive in the elements. A lot of things could have happened to this robbed and beaten man that could have ended his life. He was in a very precarious situation. The lack of care or concern by the priest and by the Levite needlessly extended the suffering of the one who needed help. But thankfully, the story doesn't end there. Enter the Samaritan. Unlike the priest and the Levite, the Samaritan was one to be looked down upon and avoided by faithful Jews during this time. The Samaritans were very lowly regarded by the Jews, and, and they did their best to avoid them. Yet, this lowly Samaritan showed no apathy or indifference. He saw a need. He knew this robbed and beaten man needed urgent and immediate care. And the Samaritan did what he could to make sure that the injured man was headed down the road to recovery. In relation to this story, how would you want to be regarded? Put yourself in, in, in some of these shoes for a moment. Put yourself in some of these situations for, for a little bit. If you see a need in front of you, right before your eyes, do you want to have the apathy of the priest or the Levite? Do you just want to keep passing by and bring absolutely nothing to the table? Or do you want to be seen in the same light as the Samaritan? When someone needs help, are you going to do something about it? When a need arises, are you ready to do what needs to be done in that situation? Apathy is a destroyer of faith. And we cannot let it invade our lives. We have to care and show genuine concern through our thoughts as well as through our actions. And in closing right now, we're going to look at a few more passages as we wrap this sermon up. And if you would turn with me back to the book of John and, and John chapter 13 this time specifically. We're going to look at John chapter 13 and verses 34 through 35. Again, that is John 13 and verses 34 through 35. And this is Jesus speaking here. 
in John chapter 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. There is no love with apathy. Apathy inhibits our ability to love. Christ's love for us is vast beyond measure. It is incomprehensible for us to even fathom. Therefore, according to the direct command that we are given by Jesus, we must strive to love others. There is always someone around us who needs help. There's always someone that we know who could use some support, who could use some encouragement in their lives. And someone who cares. There's a lot of good, caring people out there. Not only can that helpful person be us to that person in need, it needs to be us. We don't need to just have the potential to care and to help, but, but stop at that potential. That's where apathy cuts it off. We need to be active. We need to turn that potential into action and help whenever and wherever we can. When we do that, it does help to spread the love of Christ, and it helps to spread the gospel. And those are two things that we certainly need to spread as far and as wide and as often as we can. And not only that, but doing those things helps us to extinguish the sin of apathy and to stop it in its tracks. Now, if you would, turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and this will be the final passage we look at this evening. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 14 through 26. 1 Corinthians 12 and verses 14 through 26. And again, that's 1 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole sense were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body, just as he desired. If we were all one member, where would the body be? But now there are many members, but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body, which seem to be weaker, are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to that member which lacked so that there are many that there may be no division in the body but that the members may have the same care for one another and if one member suffers all the members suffer with it and if one member is honored all the members rejoice with it as a church we all bring something different to the table we have our individual talents, our own personalities. We each have our weaknesses. We each have our strengths. And we all have our different abilities. 
But as a church, we collectively make up one body. We are one in Christ. And that's a wonderful thing that we have. We must never forget that we need each other. We need each other for help and for support, for love, for strength, for courage, and for motivation. We definitely have to keep each other motivated. A lot of things can fracture one's faith and even undermine an entire church. Apathy is one of those destructors. As Christians, we cannot let apathy dampen our love, our concern, or our enthusiasm. And as a church, we cannot afford to let apathy cause division amongst ourselves and ruin our desire to reach out and to do good works or leave us as a self-contained and uncaring group. We can't let apathy do that to us. We have to get it out of our midst. Now, I can't offer an invitation in the traditional sense since we're not physically meeting tonight. But is apathy something that is affecting your faith right now? You don't have to let it continue to hollow out your faith. And remember that it is up to all of us to make sure that apathy doesn't find a home in this assembly. We can't let apathy undermine the good things that the Hillcrest Church of Christ is doing. We can't let that happen. And perhaps you're struggling with another type of sin. Maybe it's not apathy. Unfortunately, there are a lot of sins out there. And all of us, again, have our own weaknesses and, and, and perhaps struggle with, with certain ones. And again, while I can't offer a physical invitation, I can't invite you to, to come forward tonight. If you are struggling with something, please know that there are a lot of people that care about you in this congregation. We have a, a wonderful group of elders who shepherd our flock who would love nothing more than to help you if you just reach out to them. The same with our fantastic preachers, with Danny and with Caleb. They would love to help you as well. And perhaps there's there's somebody you're, you're really close to at Hillcrest. Uh, perhaps it's a family member that you have there, a, a very dear friend that you have made over the years. Again, and we also have a great group of deacons who are, are very helpful and who do a great job. But just know that there are a lot of people who care about you, who love you, and who would be more than happy to help you with any sin or any struggle or any problem that you are facing. So if you are having an issue, please feel free to reach out to somebody. Don't leave it in the back of your mind. Don't leave it ignored. Don't leave it hidden. Please reach out. Again, you have so many people who love you, who care about you, and who want nothing more than to help you stay on that straight and narrow path that leads to heaven. So please, if you're struggling with anything, reach out and get the help, get the prayers that you need. I want to thank you again for this opportunity. Uh, thank you for um, hearing my words tonight and, and for tuning in. I, I greatly appreciate that. And I hope you all have a, a wonderful week ahead of you. Have a happy Valentine's Day, uh, whatever is left of it. And hopefully we all stay strong as a congregation and not let apathy or any other sin undermine us either individually or as a group. Thank you again for your attention. I greatly appreciate it.